everyone. Welcome to Here We Are, Brattleboro's Community Talk Show. I'm Wendy O'Connell, and today on the show, we have Lita Scheintaub and Nash Patel, who are the owners and operators of Dosa Kitchen, which is a food truck down on the Retreat Meadows, right on Linden Street here in town, as well as their doses, which come hot off the griddle. They have a new book that is hot off the press. So welcome, Lita and Nash, today. To We're here. glad to have right. you here. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. Um, I'm going to jump right in with the question everyone was probably asking, which is, what is a dosa? A dosa is a light, crisp crepe made from rice and lentils. And there's pictures of it on our book mm -hmm. that you can see here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's made, it's fermented, so it goes through a process, um, a whole day process of fermentation mm -hmm. to give it a really tangy flavor. Yeah. And it's something that South Indians eat every day. It's a, it's a breakfast food there, yeah. masala dosa. That's like the standard South Indian breakfast. Uh huh. So a dosa is really a platform or an addition to a meal. It's sort of like a chapati or um, any other kind of bread that you would have on the side. Yeah, it's like that, but in, in a way it's more the center of the meal. Like uh -huh. you get a dosa plate. But uh, chapati, you get along with a curry. Uh -huh. So this, the dosa is more the star of the, the uh -huh. meal. Uh -huh. They're really way. delicious. They're so good. And you've done a lot with fermented foods. Yeah, I, food. I wrote yeah. A, a book called Cultured Foods for mm -hmm. Your Kitchen. That was my previous book. So yes. a dosa book seemed like a natural. We opened a dosa food truck yes. and then making dosas. And it's a natural extension of the, the previous book. There actually is a dosa recipe in in the, the first book as well. But the, the recipe in our new book is very elaborate. It's answered every question that we've been asked along the way uh -huh. so people can really hone in on their dosa making skills. Oh, that's great, that's great. And it's, it's kind of a surprise too when you have your first dosa. It was for me. You know, as soon as I, I understood that um, it's related to a crepe, I think that you know people can then understand it a little bit better, <laughs> but there's a real difference. Nash, could you talk a little bit because you're the dosa maker, you're the dosa guy, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so could you talk a little bit about your method because I think it's it's interesting. It's not just throwing some batter on a grill. Yeah. In, in India, we um, we uh, put the um, put the batter on the griddle. Uh, in households, we use um, a ladle, um, mm -hmm. or you could say a ladle. In and, India, they say ladle. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, m most house um, ha dosas made at home are made with a ladle. Uh -huh. uh, but restaurants in India um, use a bowl to so get a clean yeah. surface on it. Everything you have in the food truck is actually gluten free, is that right? Yeah. Which is kind of amazing. Yeah, start, it seemed natural for us because we started with a dosa that's gluten free, so mm -hmm. we didn't need to add bread. And right. the curries that we use are naturally gluten-free mm -hmm. and so we figured oh, there are a lot of people who are very strictly gluten-free yeah. so to just keep gluten off the premises mm -hmm. was easy to do. Mm -hmm. That's great um, and so your backstories are interesting as well. You're from New York City and Nash you're from India. India, yeah. from Hyderabad, uh, India. Uh -huh. uh, I was born in Pune, uh, uh -huh. close to Mumbai uh -huh. and uh, from Mumbai we came back to Shorapur where my mom's from and mm -hmm. then from and from uh, Sholapur, a small town like Pralboro. Mm -hmm. And um, from uh, Sholapur, we came to uh, Hyderabad. Uh -huh. That's where my grandfather's side is from. We are part uh, Dutch and part, part English. Mm -hmm. uh, on your mom's side. On right? my mom's yeah. side. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, on my father's side is Persian, uh, Persian. We call them Parsi, or Parsi in, uh -huh. in Mumbai. In, in, in India, we. Uh, listen to country music, that's a little shocking in, in India. Pretty so, exclusively too, yeah. right? My great-grandfather was a, um, a special guard on the, on the railways. Hmm. So, uh, and uh, he would ride, uh, a special guard was a special train for the Nizam of Hyderabad who he used to take his, um, uh, he, I think he had a harem of wives and, and my grandfather was in charge of that train going from Sholapur to to Mumbai. Uh, so it's sort of royalty. Royalty, that, yeah. that he was escorting, escorting from place to place. In those days. And and then on and my grandfather liked country music because at that time Jimmy Rogers was the first um, um, the the father of country music. Yeah. He was a singing breaksman and my 
and then the sons, my grandfather's, my great grandfather's sons, took on to the music too. They did too, and as did you. As, as, right. as me too, yes. And is that how you took up guitar? Yes. Plus, you were watching Western movies, Western right? Movies. Like John Wayne and, and all those yes. guys. And was that pretty much your your main introduction to to America and American culture? I I always uh, that was my introduction to. Uh, what and America's I always, like? Yeah, yeah, I always wanted to come here and uh, go to Nashville, Tennessee, which I did a few years ago. Oh, great! And then took my mom there too. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, went downtown to the on Broadway to uh -huh. all the honky tonks and. We danced to a few numbers, uh -huh. and uh, it was, uh, and people were like, oh, you're from India, you know country music. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a surprise. Yeah. Was it all that you hoped it would be, going uh, to Nashville and hearing the music live? Yeah, we knew all the songs, uh, <laughs> and we given a few requests, and they played it, and uh, it was, uh, it was an awesome time to be there. And my so mom great. said, yeah, I will be here. I like to be here. <laughs> <laughs> she liked Nashville. So. Uh -huh. It's because it was warm, too, so mm -hmm. she liked it. Yes, that's right. That's right. Warm and pretty humid down there as humid, well. Yes. Right, yeah. yeah. I guess the other story that I think is so great is how you two met. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so Nash made it to the U.S. via New York mm -hmm. before he ever made it to Nashville. and. Uh, uh, he always likes to say when he when he touched down, he expected to see cowboy hats right. and and boots, and he he was all confused when he got here. Mm -hmm. and so he wound up meeting me, uh, <laughs> um, a New Yorker. I was going to this restaurant that Nash waited tables at, and mm -hmm. it was my favorite restaurant because the the dosas and the the tallies they were so good. Uh -huh. So I went there a lot. Uh -huh. I met a friend, and we'd we'd go there for lunch once a week or so. And um, we always had the same waiter, and it was Nash. And he would come over and he'd tell us what to eat and how to eat it. And he'd always say, you have to mix everything with the rice. Like you get the tali, which has rice in the middle and these little bowls of different, mm. different curries and chutneys to mix in it. And he'd tell me to mix everything together. Because and I grew up, uh, <laughs> because I grew up uh, eating like that. Uh -huh. so. And he seemed very stern about it, but I didn't listen to him because <laughs> if I did that, then I wouldn't be able to eat everything, and I could eat white rice any time, and I can't eat uh, all, all those delicious things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I developed a little spark for him, and I kept coming back. And one day, I asked him if he would want to hang out after. Because the waiter is not going to ask the customer, <laughs> "Can you can you go out?" Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Actually, I came all prepared to ask him out, and turned out he, that was his first week of vacation ever in the oh. U.S. when I went. So I had to get my nerve up the next week. And I asked him to if he wanted to have some tea in the park, in Madison Square Park, uh -huh. where he worked. Tea so in the park. <laughs> <laughs> We never wound up having tea. We ate crystallized ginger. And, yeah. mm. and we sat on the grass. And I thought, oh, sitting cross-legged would be no problem for Nash. He's, he's Indian. But <laughs> it was difficult for me. <laughs> I can't sit long, long hours. I cannot sit on. Cross yeah, yeah. So. and I also expected that he was Hindu, and n never would have expected that he loved country music. So it turned out Nash is he's Roman Catholic, which is really interesting and surprising to a lot of people. Yes, and he's Anglo Indian, so he has that background, mm -hmm. and he's more Western than a lot of Indians yeah. um, might expect. Yeah, and so he eats um, broadly. He he eats all meats, mm -hmm. and uh, that surprises people a lot mm -hmm. too. So. That is, when people look at our cookbook, I like people to know that the the food is actually, it is authentic, eating mm -hmm. beef, pork, mm -hmm. lamb, that's authentic to Nash's yeah. people. Yeah. First of all, it's amazing what we don't know about other cultures, right? You know, it wasn't that long ago that you met Nash in New York City and thinking, yeah. you know, all those things, yeah. whole lineup of things about him before, you know, you found out he was Roman Catholic, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of fabulous. And I'm sure, and, and for you to land here and think, you know, John Wayne was going <laughs> to come up and shake your hand, you know. I mean, it's, it's, they're cliches, but that's how, that's how the communication has been. But it's changing, yeah. which is a nice thing. You did end up in Brattleboro, and how did you both end up in Brattleboro? Well, I had been coming here um, for several years. I'd come on and off. Um, the first time I came, I had, was meeting a friend and just had to figure out a place to meet, sort of in between Connecticut, New York, and mm -hmm. going, going north. And so 
I had heard that Brattleboro had the first food co-op in the country, and I thought that must be a really cool place. And of course, that wasn't true. But Another it, misconception, <laughs> right? <yep>. Right. <laughs> it got me here. But it's, of course, the great co-op, and it has been here a long time. Mm. Um, so I really liked the town, and I was getting tired. I was born in New York, and I was just getting tired of going places where nobody knew who I was, and I wanted mm. to see what it was like. Mm. And I, I loved that there was everything you needed downtown and that was really important to me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I would pack up a big suitcase, I had this big red suitcase, I would pack it up and um, get on Amtrak in the summer and for three summers I would come up for a month or so at a time and I had a, uh, a bicycle that I would keep in different people's garages uh -huh. for the winter and then just find a <clears throat> find an apartment to rent and I didn't need a car because I was only here for a That's month. That's great. Now we're going back to that. We're trying to get <laughs> as many biking people yeah. in town as possible. Yeah. 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 I still have my bike. I put an electric assist on oh, it. Oh, you did. That's so cool. <laughs> They're great, right? Yeah. 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 Dave, yeah. Cohn, Dave Cohn is really um, getting a lot of those bikes out. Oh, and good. Yeah, he's, yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's so much fun. It just changes everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so the last summer we were here, uh, we decided to get married and stay, and <clears throat> um, we got married on the common. And oh, oh, nice! The park, park's place over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah and we just decided to stay and um, see what it, we thought. We tried out for a year and uh -huh. see what it's like. It was a big shift for both of us, yeah. um, especially Nash, because he's used to being around a lot, a lot of, of people, people all the time, oh, even right. if it's not yep. totally social. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just having that hustle and bustle around. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the first time I took him to the common, when he, the first time he came, it was so dark and his brother was calling him on the phone and like, saying, "What? where are you? What happened to you? And, and the cell service <laughs> was fading. Are you alive? <laughs> <laughs> to me, I thought it was romantic. Yeah. <laughs> to go back just a little bit, Leah, when you were, um, when you were a kid, you started cooking at an early age. Yeah, I was really interested in natural sweets, uh -huh. and back then there wasn't really much of gluten-free. And my father, he had gone to this really special doctor in Trenton, New Jersey. His mm -hmm. name was Dr. Gatlin. Mm -hmm. He was a mystic and uh, psychic, and people came from all over to go to him. And he would only see people in the dead of night, and he lived in a really bad part of Trenton. Um, so. My dad went to him and he told him, you, you need to give up gluten if you know it's good for you. And <clears throat> he also told him to give up sugar and to dance every hour. That's, <laughs> that's great, dance every hour. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I, tr I try to remember that when I get yeah. too stressed out. Uh -huh. Get up and dance. Yeah, it's good advice. Yeah. So he gave up gluten and he felt much better. Mm -hmm. And I would, was testing out gluten-free cakes and I would use rice flour and there would always be a little burn at the end and we joke about that uh -huh. and uh, and I remember one one uh, time for my dad's birthday I he was taking all these supplements and I would I painted the back of his jacket like how we used to paint um, rock stars on the backs of our denim jackets uh -huh. I put like L-glutamine zinc it was the <laughs> exclamation point <laughs> in print class I made a uh, a pad called Lita's natural sweets and uh -huh. I always thought I might write a cookbook uh -huh. So you were how old when you were doing that? Um, probably 12. 12. So you, you were conjuring your own bakery, your own. Yeah. yeah. And I don't bake now. I, I, no, with, with Patricia Austin in town, I, I uh -huh. don't need to bake. Nash, when you, were, when you came to, to New York, you were living, your family was living together, right? Yeah, we so were. talk about you know, being with a bunch of people. So we were like six of us packed like sardines in a, in a small apartment. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, we, we, I worked in a lot of restaurants in New York City, in, mm -hmm. mostly in front of the house. And then when I met Lida and we moved here, um, I was wondering what I'm going to do. And I always wanted to move to the country and because my parents also lived in the countryside in India. Mm -hmm. And thought, oh, this would be a nice chance to see what's country like. So yeah. we came up with Lida the first time. It was beautiful in yeah. 2007. And then how and was that first winter? Um, we we came we got married in two thousand nine and the f first winner was getting used to had thick pants. Lita said we have to get to the first farmers market. So the like, winter right. farmers market. Oh, the November. winter farmers yeah. market. Yeah, so we're doing all yeah. our shopping in uh, in Jackson Heights uh, from Queens, 
getting all the utensils and everything and uh, packed up our, our Subaru. We bought a Subaru, went to New York City, came back, <laughs> packed up the Subaru and back. To State car, Vermont. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mm -hmm. We have to. We have just to get so that. we could make it to the first Winter mm -hmm. Farmers Market, mm -hmm. we were like, we thought that was the most important thing of our lives at that time, and it was really important. But we, it, it got us organized, and yeah. and uh, it got us set in town, and that we that way we got to meet a lot of people yeah. and really get uh, mm -hmm. incorporated into the community. Yeah. And I would think too that kind of deadline, you know, you're used to that like, if with a food trick, right? You got to produce. You've mm -hmm. got to got to roll one one dose yeah. out after another. Yeah. We were not making dosas at that point. We were making rice rice bowls, but uh -huh. we did some at least, some South, South Indian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, it, like chicken curry. And, mm -hmm. We um, called it pepper water. We called it pepper days. water. You called your, your business, business. Yeah. Yeah. pepper water. Mm -hmm. So yeah. pepper water yeah. is a lentil soup mm -hmm. which you have um, with the tali. Mm. So uh, tali has rice and all uh, different types of curries. Mm -hmm. uh, papadam, uh, chapati, uh, it's a big platter, and mm -hmm. then you uh, then you eat them singly. Uh -huh. So, in in Ang um, in where we grew up, um, in India, um, the Hindus uh, would call them rasam, uh -huh. which is a uh, spiced water, but the Anglo Indians would call it pepper water. Mm -hmm. uh, they had different names for it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pepper. Mm -hmm. So you boil this uh, water with coriander, mint. Uh, curry leaves, tomatoes, onions, oh. just keep boiling this water and make a, a vegetable broth and then you do this um, intensive high heat uh, tempering to it and you spice that water uh -huh. up and that water you would eat with the rice oh. and we, growing up we would eat it with ground beef or uh -huh. um, uh, ground mints. Was it like a sauce or was it? Um, it's just a, a spicy water basically. Like a broth? A broth, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I so see. it's easy, just put it in your rice and mm -hmm. it, it was like a soup and you, uh, mom would make either cutlets, cutlets were patties made yeah. out of ground beef and potatoes yeah. spiced up yeah. and that would be on the side or there would be potatoes or there would be yeah. beef, Yeah. Um, sometimes chicken maybe with it. I gotta say, it's a little hard talking about food so much. <laughs> I'm getting hungry, and there's more to come. We still have more food to talk about. <laughs> it's great, though. It's it's wonderful to hear about all of the the different things that go into these things that you're making because it's not just you know a pot and you throw some stuff in it. You've got so many different spices going spices. on. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty. It's exciting food too, as well. Yes. Yeah. So, Lita, meanwhile, you're in New York City and you're in the publishing business, pretty much. Yeah, I was a managing editor at Penguin Books mm -hmm. for a number of years, and I loved that job. It was a great job. And then I, I worked at the New Press mm -hmm. for uh, three years after that. And while I was at the New Press, I went, went to cooking school part-time to fulfill that dream. I didn't know what would come of it, yeah. but I figured that I had nothing to lose. Yeah. And um, so one day, I was really getting ready to transition out of the nine to five kind of life. And mm. I went to a, an open house at the Natural Gourmet Institute for cooking and uh, there was a, a raffle and I put in my card and I said, if I win this, it was a book, if I win this book, I'm gonna go to school. So I won the book and <laughs> <laughs> so I held true to my promise. Uh -huh. and, and so I went to cooking school and by the time I was done with cooking school, I had had some, I got some, private chef clients uh -huh. and I uh, was doing more editorial work on cookbooks mm -hmm. and so I was able to quit my nine-to-five job yeah. and work for myself. I always wanted to work for myself. Yeah. It's really important to me, to <laughs> the independence. But you kept going with editing and, and working on books themselves, right? As yeah. well as doing the cooking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like doing both because uh -huh. you do that hard work in the kitchen mm -hmm. and then you also the, do the quiet work. The more mental work. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And then over time I started really combining the two in one job. Like I did some recipe testing and then they say, oh, you're testing a recipe. Can you write the recipe in with all the details? There's just so much minutia that goes into writing yes. a recipe properly yeah. that it takes years and years to really hone that down. It's, it's just, yeah, there's a lot. And one, of her, into it. one of her projects, she had a big 
uh, freezer sitting right in the hall in the hall room with all different ice creams in it. <laughs> so, uh, and we had a ball of time with that ice cream. That yeah. For a very short period of time, though, right? Until it melted? No, it was a stand-up freezer. Oh, wow. Stand-up freezer, uh, right I had in the a living room. Very small New York apartment, and yeah, they gave me a, a freezer to contain all the ice creams that I had to make. Um, a quart of each flavor, and I kept testing and testing. And I had people coming over and had tasting parties all the time, and it was great. That's so great. Well, I think, you know, for those of us in Vermont, we know about Cook's Illustrated Magazine mm -hmm. and the Test Kitchen. And I think that, you know, we're always, I'm sure we all have our own images of what goes on. But what you're saying is that a lot of it you're doing by yourself yeah. or with a, a couple assistants? Yeah, it depends on how quick the deadline is. Mm -hmm. like if it's really tight, I'll try to get as much help as I can. Mm -hmm. uh, like I have a, a project that I'm just finishing up and I had uh, two people helping me in the kitchen. I had my friend Lizzie Rosenberg who mm -hmm. runs the uh, cooking classes and education at the co-op. Mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, Katie Isles, who was a newcomer to Brattleboro, mm -hmm. who we met through um, a shared, one of my clients, she's going to her cooking school, uh -huh. um, Divya, Divya Alter, she has a cooking school in New York, Ayurveda cooking school. Uh -huh. So she's been amazing, and the, between the three of us, we pulled off writing a book, p testing all the recipes, 100 recipes in, uh -huh. in three months. And each recipe you're doing multiple times, is that yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, it depends on what happens, yeah. like the first time. Uh -huh. Like if it's very simple, it, it might need one testing, but usually it, two or three. And mm -hmm. I try to just put those recipes into my cooking repertoire mm -hmm. during that time so they can just get tested and they become like old friends mm -hmm. and you feel really comfortable mm -hmm. with them and you feel like it, you never know what's going to happen the next time you test it. Just one variation and one ingredient yeah. could change the whole recipe. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like a really hard job. <laughs> it's, it's really fun though. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> it allows you to be really meticulous and creative at the same time. Yeah. Interesting. So, and Nash, you get to reap some of the rewards of this, right? Yes. And he helps me cream. too. Does he? Yeah, yeah, on the off season, he, off season he works yeah. on yeah. books. He's a great taster, and he he, huh. he comes up with ideas that nobody else does. So, so he has a, a, a perspective that because he does he didn't learn uh, French cooking, European style, yeah. or American cooking so much, um, except for your stints at uh, making pizza. Um, so, yeah. but oh, that's right. Yeah, so yeah. he's he's a, got a fresh mind. Yeah, uh -huh. and uh, he comes up with really great ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when when you you'd been in Brattleboro a while, what led you to open a food truck? Well, Nash had always been working front of the house, and but he would make dosas every so often mm -hmm. at home, and I always wanted more dosas. I'd say, when is dosa night? When is dosa night? And he would make big batches of it, so we'd have it for a while. And he was working at Against the Grain um, for three years when he got here. It was a really good job. Just where? It's um, on Putney Road. And the, the old printing press. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, in, in the, bo the old N book. Near press. the food bank. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah where yeah. the first yeah. Harry bank. Potter book was yes, printed. That's right. Oh, yes. That's right. That's um, claim to fame. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was a great job. And he was there for three years, but he wanted to do something for himself. Mm -hmm. And we met with a business advisor, we met with Deborah Bougiro, who's an amazing advisor and it's a great service that mm -hmm. the town provides that you can meet with her. That's good if, to know. If you yeah. have a good business, solid business plan or mm -hmm. ideas in hand, like mm -hmm. you can't just go in there and, and shoot the breeze with her, yeah. you have to come prepared. Uh -huh. So our first idea was to do a dosa batter, com dosa batter company. Mm -hmm. And so we explored that with Deborah, and we determined that in order to do that, we basically need to start a factory yeah. in order to, from the start, to make any profit and to, to really to fit it all in. Mm -hmm. So we decided against that because we didn't really want to do that, and it's not as creative. It, right. So we're, we didn't want to open a restaurant because rents are really expensive mm -hmm. and it's a big commitment, mm -hmm. a really life commitment. So um, we decided to open the food truck and give that a try. Yeah. And it, it didn't, wasn't as much of a, a risk. Yeah. And it was in uh, the Hooker, Hooker Dunham um, yeah. alleyway there for a while, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we loved that spot. And yeah, it's a nice spot. Bob Lyons was our, our mm -hmm. first landlord. Mm -hmm. He was amazing. He was really supportive of oh, us. That's great. And yeah. yeah, he put in electricity for us mm -hmm. and we had a water supply. Nice. And 
Um, it, it was a great spot, but we were just getting started, and people didn't know about us, and it was hard to find. People said that it was hard to find, mm -hmm. and people complained about parking. Mm -hmm. So then um, the retreat farm, the Wyndham Foundation, invited us to move over to, to their property. Yeah. Yeah. And so we decided to go there because you could see us from the road, and right. the, it, it makes a big difference. It sure, the visibility. Yeah, it sure and, and you have tourists coming through that way, too. Yeah. yeah. So much of what you're doing, and um, I think the impetus, is, as you spoke about, for doing the food truck was uh, the food itself. Yeah. 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 Right. We wanted to mm -hmm. share with the community the kind of food that we eat mm -hmm. from our combined culinary heritages. Mm -hmm. And I, eating locally while also eating broadly is really important right. to me. Mm -hmm. it, like eating healthy food doesn't have to mean eating a certain way. Indian food is healthy food. If you don't deep fry it too much, mm -hmm. if you don't add a lot of sugar, and if you don't add toxic industrial oils yeah. like canola oil, then the food is healthy. Yeah. It, that's how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And we, a lot of people make this like ethnic food exception when they go to restaurants and then they go back to the farmer's market and they buy their food and, and eat. And so we wanted to offer people an opportunity mm -hmm. to have it all mm -hmm. in the eating out experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your book has come out in just in the last month. So you're yeah. doing book tours. Yeah, we're doing yeah. a few events yeah. in, uh, in, in Vermont. Yep. And um, the, has your business increased at the food truck it, since it, the... It has, yeah. yeah it's, um, a big, so we have people coming from all the way from New, uh, Nashua and New Hampshire. And like, wow. Farther than that, even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I do want to let people know that um, we'll, we'll be doing uh, uh, a close-up of the book itself, but just to show it here a little bit. Um, it's a beautiful book. It's a really beautifully designed book. The colors are fabulous. Um, it's, it feels very Indian, the whole, the whole book itself, and the recipes. I haven't tried any, but <laughs> I'm also not a real cook. Mm -hmm. so, um, but they look great, and I know from what I've tasted how good the food is, so it's pretty exciting. How, how is it doing a book tour? It's fun. It's, it? Yeah, it's, I, I love um, just having people buy a book from, from the truck and yeah. signing it there. Like oh, that's great. Oh, you can do that there. That's yeah, great. Yeah, and, um, Everyone's Books is selling it too, so Good. people can always get there. We had a, a big party at the truck for the release of the cookbook, uh -huh. and Everyone's Books was there selling books. Nice. And we sold out, and it was it was really great. It was really amazing to see the support of, of the community mm -hmm. for, for what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And the book is, um, our publisher said, we want you to do 50 recipes, not the standard 100, because it's an introduction to a new kind of food. Oh. And um, so that it's a smaller package. It's it's more affordable for people uh -huh. for like an impulse buy. Well, not an impulse buy, but a, like if you're not sure um, uh, if you want to commit to a toll on doses. Yes, right, right, right. <laughs> and and people can buy it as a gift. And um, so it's it's fun getting out there. Mm -hmm. it, the book was a while in the making, and now that it's here, it's like it, this this little thing. With all that work Isn't that went amazing? into it, <laughs> I know it's it's incredible what goes into. I mean, people don't realize, you know, what goes so much goes into each single book that is on a shelf. Yeah, you know, and that's multiplied by millions. You know, do you enjoy selling the book too, Nash? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you've got your truck venue for it, right? Yes, yes, yes. And you guys are open Wednesday through Sunday. Is Wednesday that right? to Sunday, and we're having a food truck uh, roundup at the uh, retreat farm. Meaning um, all the all the food trucks in town. Yeah, oh, a few, several uh, of them. Several of them. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a great. fun event. It's from five to eight on, in five July eight. and August. On Thursdays. On Thursdays. Uh, yeah. All, in all July and August mm -hmm. on Thursday. That's yeah. great for folks to know about. Yeah. yeah. That's one because we one thing we've got in Brattleboro are some really interesting food trucks. Yes. Yeah. I'm so glad you came on the show. Yeah. yeah. We are too. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank it's you. really yes. fun. Thanks to all of you for coming today and. Um, we have a, a really interesting extra, um, the music going out of our show today. If you take a listen, it's a little ditty that Nash put together, and we're going to use that as our going out music. So stay tuned to the end. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time on Here We Are. Dosa, you can eat them every day. Dosa is made of rice and lentils. Dosa is gluten. From the land of Samosa, those kitchens where you wanna be.